Hey everybody, I said earlier on one of my videos that Inkscape kind of had a, you know, thing that for some Mac people can cause you a, a real pain in the butt, but it seems like, I don't know if what happened, but somebody must have heard or something, but the, the brand new version came out not too long ago, and the kind people that help the Inkscape project compile this program for the Mac has finally made a DMG file so you don't have to go through the rigmarole like I had to do to you start using version 0.92 you can go to their website which is www.inkscape.org and pick up this copy before the other ways you had to do is you had to compile it through different means they're going to require X quartz so be prepared to download that as well and get that configured the way I was able to get mine to work, of course, I have older hardware, was using a thing called Brew. And the instructions for that are also on the Inkscape website. And that was the caveat I was telling you about is you just couldn't just download it like you could GIMP and just install it and just enjoy it. You had to compile it in order to get the latest and greatest. But now they have a DMG file and just download it and you're ready to rock and roll. As you see on my screen here, I have Inkscape open. The whole point of this video is to not only tell you that, hey, look, they finally got it where you didn't have to compile it now if you don't want to. I still may because my older hardware is not really playing too nice with this version. So I may compile it so it's more custom to my machine. But I was telling you earlier on one of my videos, I believe it was my Affinity Designer videos, that it couldn't do envelope type distortions. And for some people, especially maybe in the sign industry or some other industries, you need that type of distortional functions to help with your clients' projects. And I do apologize for the noise again. However, I can't control the weather. It's raining and the AC's kicking on because it is muggy as fire here. So let's go ahead and hop right on into this. I'm going to grab the text tool down here. Click on here. As soon as I grab the text tool, there we go. Grab it and I'm going to just type in. Oh, I don't know. I'll do it in capitals here. As soon as I learn how to spell. There we go. Oh, let's see if we have a bolder font in here we can run here with. Doesn't seem to like the magic mouse scrolling on this, so let me just buzz down here to something. Look for something. There we go heavy so we can see this better all right i'm gonna go back to the selection tool hold shift and that come out there and i'm also going to hold control now that's the other thing for you mac people you're used to hitting command for a lot of the stuff this will be later fixed in inkscape but you got to hit the actual control key like the windows people do in order to constrain things and do things of that nature because it just they just haven't corrected that binding yet for Apple so keep that in mind so here we go with the word Inkscape here now like I was saying you can put things on a path I'll draw a quick path here with it we'll grab the path tool here and I'll just click here drag across hold control which will the actual control key will constrain me click again it's the, it's, whoop, the escape key kind of killed everything, so let's try it again. It's been a little bit since I used Inkscape. No, I'm being honest with you. Enter con confirms the line. There we go. Now I'm going to take my tool and just bend it. All right. The whole thing I'm going to show you here is you can sit there and put text on a path, which is fine. See, and it will put it on a path. And everything's hunky dory and the other programs will do that too no problem okay it bends it to a nice curve yeah it's nice however that's not what I was trying to explain in the other video if this is the only effect that you'll ever need then you're cool you don't have to worry about it so let's back it up a little bit let's see there we go let's get rid of that line right there so let's go ahead and kill this all right what i was saying is we may actually want to deform this into something else so let's go ahead and, and grab that and let's drag it down because i want to show you what, what i'm talking about in the deforming department 
In order to do that in Inkscape, there are path effects that allow you to do this. But first, we need a path. So, if you made sure everything's correctly spelled and everything, then go to Path, Object to Path. That will change this text object into a group. Now, to make your life a little easier, I would make sure I would combine these, because if you look down here where my pointer is going down here, it's a group of eight objects. What we'll do is we'll go to Path and Union, and that will become one object. It says group of eight, and it's not Boolean. Oop, I forgot something. Again, when you don't do something for a while, you screw up. you got to ungroup it and then do this. Now it's a path. It'll tell you down here if it fails. Sometimes it brings up a dialogue. But as you saw down here, if you back up the video, it actually showed that it failed. It said it wasn't correct. Now we can go to path again. Go down to path effects. This will bring up the path effects thing on the side here, the panel. You click on this, and what we just did is kind of a bend. You could do that if you'd like. But what I'm talking about is envelope deformation. And I'll show you why this is really a, a nice thing to have. Okay. Like I was trying to say before, you want the top of your text flat, but the bottom may be arched. Here's where you do it. I'm going to say the bottom bend path. I'm going to click on this button right here. And if you notice, it puts a green line down here. If I want it to be a smooth curve, all I have to do now, if you notice, I got the, the uh, node tools automatically selected. I could go here grab it or I can just here let's do it straight in the middle let's add this Oop, I gotta select the nodes first oh boy hold on me and my magic mouse are still getting used to each other here we go sorry folks again I'm getting used to this touchy thing there we go now that's dead in the center and I'll pull that node straight Whoop! I got everything undo that click this note only there we go and see now I can bring this in now, if I want that to be smooth so it comes out to a nice arc then there we go we can drag this out and if you notice if you're not careful you can actually cause some problems with this because of the way it's wrapping You gotta be careful when you do this too. It's not perfect, but it allows you to do these type of things if you need them. I'm gonna hit the arrow key, drop this down. Now I don't know if that's an artifact of the bend or on my computer here because I am using, like I said, older hardware. But the idea is there. You can see that the thing. Let me. Okay, there we go. You can see that it's trying to bend this in an arc. Let's undo this. Until that goes away. I guess I can't do that extreme, but you can see how it's trying to bend the shape into an arc. We can go back even further in time here. Before I even added the node. It might make it a little smoother. Here, uh, there it goes. It's a little bit smoother now. You can see you have complete control over that, and then you can take these and bend them up if you need more of an arch or whatever. Now, some fonts work better than others when doing this. Keep that in mind. If you want to bend the top as well, you can just select top and inch it in. Like that. We'll just get out of here and just take a look see now we have it where the actual text is being deformed and it's not going across an arch and being placed there it's actually being deformed this is things that affinity designer and autodesk's graphic that they got off of indio do not do you cannot do them you cannot do it at all there's just no way that it's just not viable this is why I was talking about, about the envelope distortion. So I kind of hope that maybe Affinity and 
um, graphic. Both of the two programs I use a lot on the Mac besides good old Inkscape here to do my work. I don't like jumping between program to program to program to get something done. You know, but it would be nice if they did do that. Um, this is not really a tutorial necessarily, guys. I'm sorry I should have said that in the beginning. This is just to show what was lacking in the other programs. I'm not slamming the developers of that. Um, they may have a reason why they left it out, but I would like to see this functionality in another version. And that's what this video is about. Is just kind of let people know, that, hey, look, this is the missing functionality I'd like for you to put into your program. All right, folks, I believe that is it for this one. This, like I said, this is fairly quick. Um, you can play with this feature if you like. Oh, and let me show you one more thing. If you click on this, notice how the Path Effects Editor here pops back up. Okay, if you click this, you remove the effect, and it goes back to normal. Just control Z that put it back. But if you're happy with that, and like for example, if you're going to cut that in vinyl, you need to finalize that effect so that way it becomes outlines so it, your cutter can cut it. What you do is you go up to your path again and say object to path. Notice in the path effects editor, it goes blank. Now, if you want to cut that out, on a uh, cutter you can let me go down here and we'll take that off and we'll add a, a holding shift we'll click on this and add a stroke but, but you can now see this is now something that your cutting software will see as outlines and should cut this out if you export in the correct format so there you go folks again this wasn't like I said a big tutorial it was more or less kind of show what I was trying to mean by deformation. Now a lot of you know what I was talking about. Some may not have. And this is a video just to say again. This is what I'd like to see. Is, is things like this. And if you wanted to. Let's step back in time. You don't have to be smooth curved either way. On this. And I'll show you that. Anyway that's what I meant to say. Good lord I can't even talk today. Path effects. Envelope deformation. Let's do bottom. Just double click and add a node, and double click up here and add a node. I get to it. Whoop, I gotta only do it one side at a time, dummy. I'm getting ahead of myself, folks, and I really shouldn't be, but that is par for my course. Whoops, bottom, there we go. I could take this and bend this out, and notice how with that type of node, it is a corner node. I can bend it almost in a square, and if we go to the top. Double click it. There we go. So those are some more of the deformations you can do. And there are a couple videos out there showing more about this feature in Inkscape. But again, I was just wanting to show you that a free version of a program is able to do something that these other guys couldn't do. And I'm kind of like, hey guys, can we please have this? That'll be nice. Because um, I converted over, for, you know, when I went to the Mac from Corel Draw, and and I really use the envelope sometimes to put things on objects and whatnot to make them more realistic. And it would be really nice if I can have this feature again. All right, folks, I promise you that's it. This is just a quick overview of what I think that Affinity should, and also uh, graphics should put in their uh, programs on the next releases. Hopefully they will. That'd be nice. Till next time, folks, y'all have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one.